All right, we are ready. Okay, cool. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kirsten Colty. I am one of the admissions counselors at St. Mary's College of California. I'm also a double alum, which means I went here for um, undergraduate and graduate school. Uh, I held, I think I held four different jobs when I was an undergraduate, uh, one job as a graduate student, and now I work here as full-time staff. So I've pretty much worked in every department we have on campus. Um, super duper quickly, in all honesty, I will not spend a lot of time on this particular slide, um, but I thought it would be important to note, St. Mary's is so small that our undergraduate population is a little over 2,700 students total. And so what that means for you as a student, if you're interested in St. Mary's, uh, your average class size is gonna be about 19 students per class. And when I went here as a student, biggest class I was ever in had 24 people and the smallest had five. Uh, so as you can probably tell, it runs the gamut from you know smaller to very, 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 very small for your class sizes. And depending on your major or minor, um, your class may get more populated or less populated depending on how specific the coursework is. Um, we are a liberal arts university. So every once in a while, usually parents will ask like, oh man, but my son really wanted to do mathematics. Can he not go to St. Mary's? No, I swear you can. <laughs> liberal arts literally just pertains to the style of teaching at a university, not um, the kinds of majors that they offer. And we are a Catholic LaSallean college. So what that means for you as a student is you do not have to be Catholic to attend or apply. We do have a religious component, however. So uh, you are required to take two religious courses when you're here. The first is the same one everyone takes. It's the Bible and its interpretations. It is a secular based course where you analyze the Bible and how it's influenced Western cultures. The second one is one of your choosing. We have uh, coursework on by far, I would say our most popular uh, course for a second course to take is religions in India. It always fills up very fast. We also have um, a whole course on Islam another course on Judaism, which are both wildly popular as well. We also have courses on uh, Catholicism and Christianity as a whole as well. So if you're interested in any of that, just know that you do have options when it comes to that second religious course. We are thankfully a NCAA division one school. So what that means is if you want to compete at a very high level, you can probably do so. I would say we're most well known for our men's and women's basketball teams but we do have other sports that perform very highly. Um, for example, men's rugby is technically a club sport, but we're ranked fourth in the nation because you actually do play competitively. Um, so if you're interested in any sport though, and you're like, I would like more information, please, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help in any way I possibly can. This next slide I think is particularly important especially when it comes to the diversity aspect of St. Mary's, as well as the inclusivity and accessibility when it comes to first generation college students. So a little over 57% of our total student body populace identifies as one of the following. You could either be multiracial, biracial, or a person of color. And so that makes up actually about 57% of our total student body populace. And what's really cool about that is we have clubs that are sometimes called student orgs, which stands for organizations, as you can probably tell. <laughs> student orgs all centered around diversity and equity. And I really loved that aspect when I was here as a student. I still love it as a staff member as well. So I highly encourage if you are a student who you would like to explore that side of yourself and you want to get involved with others, please consider joining a student org or student club or something of that sort, especially where it concerns identity as well. Um, I was in Pride, which is our um, LGBTQIA uh, club here on campus. 
it was so welcoming and it was so fun to go to. Um, I have really positive memories of going to those meetings. And so I always encourage students, should you feel a burning desire to join a club, please do so. Um, just because it, it was such a fun eye opening opportunity and it was a great way to meet people and make genuine friendships with people, especially outside my major. And this next statistic is super important, um, especially to me because I actually fall in the um, in this statistic. If you are a student who you're currently receiving what are sometimes called federal trio grant privileges or um, to kind of simplify it further, if you are a student who you are the first person in your family to go to college, you um, come from a lower socioeconomic background, or you are a student with disabilities, you could be all three, two of the three, one of the three, you qualify for a program called High Potential on our campus. The whole purpose of High Potential is to ensure that um, not only are you um you know gonna graduate on time for sure but that you feel supported not only financially and academically but also personally as well so through that program we have uh, you know textbook loaning programs we have professional wear loaning programs so for example if you were to be asked for an interview for a um, internship and you go like oh my gosh i don't have a suit or i don't have you know, a, a dress to wear, or I don't have the right shoes. This program lets you access their library of clothing, essentially. And um, they range in size from literally size zero to I've seen size 32. So we try to be inclusive of size as well with the clothing. Um, but it was a monumental help uh, when I was applying for internships as well as just plain old job interviews. Very quickly, I wanted to touch upon two programs that were very unique to St. Mary's, the first being seminar. Seminar harkens back to us being a liberal arts university. And the whole point of the class is to engage with uh, your peers in really interesting conversations about mainly the human condition and uh, modern society. And if you're like me, I'm not shy in the classroom, or sorry, I'm, I'm not, wait, no, yeah, I'm extroverted outside the classroom. I'm deadly shy in the classroom. Before going to college, I wouldn't talk in class at all. I would never volunteer. I would never talk. I was just there to take notes. And I was very scared that people would judge me and think I was dumb if I volunteered. Thankfully, once you go to college, that does change. And for me, seminar was a huge aspect in how that changed for me. And now, you know, now that I was able to talk to my peers and it was an expectation in that class, I wasn't as scared anymore to participate in class. Um, seminar is a very judgment-free zone, I would say. I always felt very safe. And I always felt like there was an expectation that everyone was respected. So a lot of the um, readings you're going to be doing for this class mostly have to do with social justice and social inequity. So it's really interesting because even though some of these texts were written, oh my gosh, thousands of years ago sometimes, they're still very much relevant today. And no matter what your major is, you will take this once per academic year. And thankfully there are no tests in seminar, all of your grade is mostly contingent upon how you participate in class. Thankfully, it's not the amount of times you talk, it's how you engage with others. And very quickly, in the same kind of vein where you will take this once per academic year, um, we also offer January term. January term is a one month long term where you take one course. And this course is supposed to be both sides kind of um, what I would say is, you know, extracurricular or, you know, a hobby, a genuine passion of yours, but also academic rigor and then getting course credit for uh, your participation in that class. So to give you all kind of a perspective, um, I had two of the best classes I had ever taken for Jan term are 
um, our Hogwarts a history course, which as you can probably tell from the title is a Harry Potter class. And I also took a video game narration course and it was really interesting. Um, and so if you really are passionate about weird niche things, you might really love Jan term. Um, some examples of courses that are extremely popular for Jan term. Um, we have one class that fills up every single year very, very, very quickly in registration, and it's Star Wars and theology. So if you've ever been curious about the lore of Star Wars, you might really like that class. Very quickly, I thought it would be um, of great import to show this slide. I tried to have a brief snapshot of the kinds of majors we offer here. And I will say, if you're looking at this slide though, and you go, oh no, I really wanted to be a whatever major and it's not on this list don't fret please don't fret i've had friends who proposed their own majors at our university before and when you do so you get academic guidance and you do it through academic uh uh support systems as well as faculty here on campus so we do that in order to make sure you're going to graduate on time for us on time graduation is four years or less. Very quickly, um, I thought this was very important to go over. There's something in higher education called sticker price. The best way I can explain it is, um, oh, let's say you go to a Best Buy and you're trying to find a laptop. You find one that you really like and the sticker price is quite literally the price on the barcode. But what the sticker price does not account for is, for example, um, if you qualify for military benefits, that takes off some money off of that computer. If you qualify for higher education benefits or student uh, coupons or things like that, that'll shave off some money too. And so the way I like to explain sticker price in college is very much the same way. The sticker price is quite literally, if a student was never, ever, ever awarded need-based aid of any kind, scholarship of any kind, or grants of any kind, this would be what you were left paying. The reason I bring this up is because if you're anything like me and you saw the sticker price, you're like, I felt the same way when I was applying to St. Mary's. But then I realized very quickly after a conversation I had with my financial aid counselor, that that does not, that total, that sticker price does not include <laughs> the loans or the grants or the scholarships I had earned. Um, so very quickly on your screen, I personally am going to round up. The total cost of attendance is about $68,000 per year. What that does not include is the average financial aid package is for $38,000 per year. And that's just average, meaning you could earn less, but most likely you could earn more too, because that's just the average. What the financial aid package does not account for is any scholarship you may have earned because we house ours differently. Need-based aid, is classified differently at our institution than your merit-based scholarship. We are test optional. So when we dole out your merit-based scholarship, it's solely based upon the rigor and the GPA of your coursework at the time that you are admitted. So our scholarships range from the lowest tier you could possibly qualify for is $13,000 per academic year. These range from $13,000, $20,000, $26,000, $29,000. The average uh, merit-based scholarship is worth $29,000. I will say there are other um, scholarship opportunities as well. If you'd like to screenshot this slide or pause and go over the requirements of these other competitive scholarships, I definitely recommend doing so, you know, maybe pausing the video and analyzing that very quickly, but very quickly I'm actually going to move on to the application. There is some strategy for when you would apply for college. Thankfully, we have early action. We do not have early decision at our university. So what that means for you, um, if you're a student applying, is that 
you know, let's say you apply to five different schools and you apply early action, you are not committed to any of those five schools. You can pick and choose which one you'd actually like to go to ultimately. If you apply to a school that has only early decision, you are locked in my friend. So that must be your one school. Um, so I always say, if you are someone that financial aid and financial assistance is something that you would you know, be really interested in for college, I was definitely in this boat. Early, de early decision would be much harder because you are admitted regardless of financial aid. So if financial aid is not a concern for you and your family when you're applying to college, early decision might be great because it's a guaranteed spot. Um, so early action for us, the application is due November 15th, which is very close. <laughs> We're on the common application. And if you're watching this video, I'm actually going to send the fee waiver code uh, for our application to your counselors so that they can send it directly to you. That fee waiver code is of utmost importance because it waives your complete fee for your application you won't pay a single penny. And the average US teen right now is applying to, I think it was nine to 10 different colleges. And especially if you're applying on the Common App, that's $50 a pop. So that adds up very, very, very quickly. Um, so I always think fee waiver codes are super important. If for whatever reason you're watching this and you would like one too, please let me know. I am more than happy to help in any way humanly possible. Um, so very quickly, once again, my name is Kirsten Colty. Thank you for uh, joining and for watching us today. I will leave all of my contact information with your counselors as well as that fee waiver code. And um, thank you so much. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Kirsten. That was very cool. Thank you both for doing that. That's really, that really, that really helps. Um, because sometimes counselors are hesitant to record and I'm like, no, please, please do it. Don't worry. There are no trade secrets of any kind, I swear. Uh, <laughs> but the fee waiver code is super duper important. So I will send that in an email update to you all, like realistically, maybe in about five minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that works perfectly. Um, oh, and perfect. And if any students ask about fee waiver, we'll definitely forward it along to them. Um, so Perfect. Really, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you both so much for having me. I'm so sorry we were having technical issues earlier. That was super frustrating. It so was sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm, glad that, I'm glad we were able to work it out. <laughs> me too. I'm so happy I was able to see you guys. And Same like here. I said, check your inbox maybe in about five-ish minutes. I will send you all that fee waiver. I'm going here. right over there to do that now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you both so much. I really appreciate it. Thank so you, much. Kirsten. That was awesome. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>